you ever updated a piece of furniture and you absolutely loved it? But then after a few years, you're looking at it thinking, wow, my makeover needs a makeover. Well, that's what we're gonna be doing today. Updating my outdated updates. So this bench is gonna be getting a fresh coat of paint and a beautiful new fabric on the cushion. I'm also going to be giving a shabby chic look to this cute little footstool. If you are a returning viewer, thank you so much for stopping by. If you're new here, my name is Becky and welcome to Kinda Shabby. I enjoy sharing all things DIY and decorating. And if you enjoy those things too, then stick around. If you like what you see, please subscribe, like, and comment. Now, let's get these projects started. All right, y'all. Cushion has been removed, bench is free of dust, and the paint has been stirred. Here is our new color. Ooh, pretty. And since this is a new can, I'm gonna be pouring some into a plastic cup so I don't cross-contaminate my colors. So I'm gonna pour this off and we're just gonna go ahead and get started. It's not scary, y'all. It is just paint. I like to turn my projects over and start with the bottom first. Then once that's dry, I can turn it over and make sure the parts that are really seen at the top look really good. You just dip that brush in there and you want to make sure that you have enough paint on your brush, but you don't want too much on there to glob it on. Now, when I first started painting furniture, I didn't have the luxury of having people on Facebook and YouTube showing me how to do it. So I just bought some cheap stuff at thrift stores and just practiced on it until I felt comfortable. The very first paint that I ever put on a real piece of my furniture, I was scared to death. I literally, my hand was shaking and I just closed my eyes and smacked the paintbrush on there. I'm like, well, I done done it now, so I guess I better do it. And you just gotta have that attitude. You can do it, it's lots of fun. So let's just get started. Look at that, not scary. This is a custom color that I had mixed at Home Depot. It's the bare chalked paint, and I really like to use this. It goes on really well, it glides on really well, and you can probably see I had it color matched to my curtains here. So you can take anything in and they'll color match stuff for you. Since this paint is in a, probably about the same color family, you know, it's all in a blue-green color family, it's not going to take as many coats as, say, if I were trying to cover up a black or a dark brown paint. So I've got that going for me. Also, just know that if you're painting something for the first time, when you put your first coat on, it may not look well. A first coat is not going to cover well it is going to take several coats before it starts looking pretty. Now while this is drying, I'm going to go outside and sand down the top of that little footstool. Let me bring it in closer so you can see. I put this on with these little chicks years ago. But I'm gonna go and sand that off so I can shabby chic up this little footstool. Well, this little cutie patootie has been sanded and wiped down and now I'm just gonna start putting some paint on. I will be using the Waverly Chalk Paint in the color Plaster and I picked this up from Walmart. And since this is such a bright blue, it's probably gonna take four coats to cover this thing. And I do like to start along the outside edges. When I start along the outside, then when I come back over the top, I can smooth out if there's any kind of a ring left at the top from the brush pushing the paint up onto the edge. This isn't gonna take long to paint at all. Now there is like a little ring around the top here 
So that's why I like to do the sides first. Then I come back over and just smooth everything out. Super quick. Gonna let this dry, then we'll just be adding more layers until we get an opaque coverage. Now I'm going to start removing the cover from the cushion. I love this fabric and I am going to wash it and reuse it, but I just don't want it on this cushion anymore. So what I'm going to do is take my flathead screwdriver and I'm also going to use my little snippers here and I have a little mason jar to put the screws in there until I can toss them all. But just going to take this, go up underneath the staples and give it a little bit of a tug here. Just enough to get that to where it's come up. Grab it with my pliers, my little snippers, and just wrestle that out and drop it in my cup. And I'll be doing that all the way around. And then when I get to the point where I'm going to start recovering it with the other fabric, I'll show you that process as well. In the meantime, I got a whole lot of staples I'm gonna have to pull out of this thing. Well, our two coats on here turned out so beautifully. What a difference a little bit of paint makes. So now I want to bring out these details, even though they're beautiful like that, I wanna bring out these details using just a little bit of wax. So the first thing I'm gonna do, I'll show you here on this area. I start with my clear wax. This is the Valspar sealing wax. I'm just gonna very lightly dip into it and offload onto the lid. Then I'm gonna go in here and just dab into all of those areas, the highs and the lows, just to really work that wax into that area there up, down, and all around, working that in. Making sure you are covering all that design. Okay, looks good. Now I'm gonna take my rag. This is a lint-free shop cloth, and I'm gonna wipe off the excess of that clear wax. Then I'll be taking my black wax on an old chip brush barely dipping the bristles into the wax and just offloading onto the lid. And when I hit this with the brush, you're gonna see, you can see it looks a little splotchy. That's okay, don't worry about that. We are gonna fix that up in just a minute. And we're gonna work that black wax into all of those little crevices of our leaves here. Now I'm taking a totally different brush, and this has a nice big thick fluffy um, head on this brush because that looks like a hot mess right there. That looks like we've messed something up. But we're gonna take our brush here and we're going to rub that in to really work in that black into those crevices. It still looks like we've messed up. It still looks like a hot mess. Don't worry about it. We are okay, guys. Now, I'm gonna take my rag and I'm gonna wipe the excess off here. It still doesn't look really pretty yet, but it will. Now, that we've wiped off most of that excess, we're gonna go back in with the same brush, our brush that we applied our clear wax with, because this acts like a little eraser to take off all of that other stuff that we don't want. And just really work that in. So now, when I take my rag, let me take a different portion here, and I wipe down, we're gonna be left with just a nice aged look 
inside all of the details of those leaves. But you have to start with your clear wax because that black wax wants to really, really soak into that paint. And it just leaves all of that black wax all in those little crevices there to give it that beautiful aged look without making a mess. Okay friends, while our wax is drying, we're going to move on to our little footstool. So the first thing I'm going to do is apply this cute little stencil. I got this at Joann's. It is so cute and very tray chic. And I've seen a lot of gals on YouTube that will take these stencils and hold them down and do all that. That is not me. I like to use a stencil adhesive, and please don't use this indoors. This needs to be an outdoor thing. I take it, I lay the stencil face down, so I'm actually spraying the back of the stencil very lightly with the stencil adhesive. And when I lay this down, I put it on either an old Amazon box that I've got spread out, or a piece of poster board, just something that you want to protect your surface because this will get very sticky. You don't want to be walking in it on your garage floor. So ask me how I know. So then once that has a second to set up and your directions will be on the back of your stencil spray adhesive to tell you how long you need to wait. Then you come and you line it up and you put it down. I just take my little paws and push down all over it and that way it gives a very good stick, very small chance of bleed through because it's stuck down really well. But, I'll pull up just a little bit, you can hear that, it's repositionable. So if you put it down and you don't like where you have it, you can actually move it around. So for this little stencil, I'm going to be painting it in the color Silver Lining. It is a Waverly chalk paint that I pick up from Walmart. So I'm just going to grab a little bit on my brush, dip in, and I am going to blot off most of the paint onto my little tile. And now we're going to go over our stencil in just an up and down motion, a pouncing up and down motion with very little paint. I use a smaller brush when I'm using a stencil such as this one because it is very, it has some very small parts to it. So I wanna make sure that I get my brush all down in there. I'm just gonna eyeball it, see if I've missed any spot. fill in. Okay, I think I've got that all filled in pretty well. And it's a stencil, so, and it's supposed to be rustic, so if I've missed a few spots, it's okay. Now, I don't wait until it's completely dry, so I'm just going to go ahead and very carefully pull this up. And you can see it turned out so very cute. Now I'm gonna set this aside and let this dry, and then I'm gonna show you how we're going to embellish the edges with these cute little rosettes. And then we're gonna add this to the edges, and it's just gonna be the cutest little thing that you've ever seen. I got the inspiration for the makeover on this little stool off of Pinterest, and the blog was Confessions of a Serial DIYer. And she made these cute little floral rosettes out of fabric. So we're gonna be doing that. I took my punch, this is just a paper punch, and it's a one and a half inch circle. So I just cut out these circles with my paper punch, and it turned out that it was the exact size that I would need to go on the side of our little stool here. Now, if you don't have a hole punch, 
you can cut them out yourself by hand or you can just roll those rag roses yourself. So I cut these out of cardstock to give them a little more stability. And if you've seen my channel, if you are a returning viewer, you know that I like to snip and rip fabric. So that is what I did. I snipped these in 13 inch long sections and they are a half inch wide. And it gave just the cutest little look to our rosettes. And if you want to know more about how to do that with the fabric, all you do is take your fabric, make little slits in it at half inch marks. I'm not gonna rip all of these, I'll just rip a few. And then you just rip it. Now once you have ripped your strips, you do wanna make sure you go back and remove all of the string. All right, so let's get started with our rosettes. What you're going to do is take one of your strips and you're just gonna fold in and roll the edge. Just roll that. You're gonna take one of your circles, move this out of the way so you can see, and you wanna use something to protect your space because it is gonna get a little messy but you're gonna take and put just a little dab of glue into the middle of your circle there. And then you're going to put that piece of fabric and just hold it until it sets. So a couple of seconds. And you'll know it's ready when you give it a little tug and it doesn't go anywhere. So then you're going to take, and I know everything is white, it's hard to see, but you're going to twist your piece of strip here. You're just gonna twist it. And we're gonna start wrapping it around the center to make our rosette. That's all we're gonna do. So twist it, wrap it around a little bit, fold it back, little dot of glue, Whoops, push it down. Twist your strip, roll it around. Little dab of glue and push it down. And you're just gonna repeat this process of twisting, wrapping it around and gluing until you have enough of your rosettes to cover the sides of your bench, or excuse me, your footstool. So if you've got a footstool, or if you have a cute little pot, how cute would this look on a little flower pot that you put these little rosettes on? And so that's what we're gonna do. We're just gonna continue twisting and gluing until we get our little rosettes. I started gluing down the little florets with the seed pearls in there. I love how that looks. I can't wait to show you the finished product. But I did find that it was easier when I applied the pearls to take my glue gun, put a little bit of glue in the middle, and then use some tweezers to hold the little seed pearl and pop that in there. So I'm going to finish applying my seed pearls and put these all over the little footstool. I can't wait to show you the finished product there. Now we're going to go ahead and cover that cushion. Now this is the fabric that I removed and it's adorable, it's fun and whimsical, but I was ready for something a little different. And I'm not gonna be removing the original upholstery on there because the material that I'm going to be covering it with is thick enough to cover this pattern. And you girls know, if you are my 1990s soul sisters, girls, we were rocking us some burgundy gold and hunter green back in the day. I probably had this bench about 35 years and this is our new fabric. It has all the wonderful things that I love. It has birds and bird cages and lilacs and French labels and roses. It's just so 
beautiful and it's going to match gorgeous, just gorgeously with the new color that we put on the base. So I'm going to break out the iron. You can see it's a little wrinkled. Give it just a little bit of a pressing to get those wrinkles out and then we'll start turning this thing over and nailing it all down. Actually, we'll use staples. Please don't use nails. They will not hold your fabric in place. So before I get to cutting everything, I have measured this and marked the middle on each side. It is not going to matter because we're going to cover that up. I have also measured my fabric and took a water-soluble pen that you can pick up at Joann's, Hobby Lobby, Walmart, places like that. I measured my fabric and I also marked that at the middle. So that way when I go to staple it on, it is going to be straight. Now to figure out how much of the fabric I needed to wrap this around, I simply took my tape measure, put it underneath, and wrapped it over until I saw what I thought would be a good amount on each side. So once I placed that down, I decided 25 inches around was actually going to be enough fabric to give me enough of an edge to staple in and to cover it without pulling. Okay, now comes the fun part, stapling it all on. Now that I have my fabric all situated, I'm going to line up my marks, make sure it's even, hold it over, pull it a little tight, and then staple it on. Then I'm gonna walk around to the other side and do the same thing. Make sure it's in the middle, line up my marks, Pull it over and staple it on. And sometimes if your staples don't go all the way in because parts of the wood are maybe a little harder than the others, just take your hammer and hammer them down. Okay, so now that those are in place, I'm going to start on opposite edges. I'm going to pull this, staple here, go over and staple here. I'm only going to put one in here and one over there in case I do need to remove it and straighten up my pattern. Staple right here and come to the opposite side there. That looks good. Okay, I'm gonna turn it over and see if I like the way the pattern is looking so far. Hmm. I do. So that looks good so far. I'm liking it. Turn this thing back down and I see where I need to pull this a little tightly. And when you're working with your fabric, you'll be able to see it. It's hard to show that on camera, but you will be able to see that when you're actually covering it yourself. So this needs to be tighter here. I just love this fabric. I cannot wait to get it on that bench. Then we're gonna to get to the sides and the corners here in just a minute. Pull that nice and tightly there in the middle. And I'm gonna put about three, just to make sure that's good and tight. And do the same thing on the other end. Pull, eliminating any slack. Pull that up, put a couple 
just like this now. Now I will adjust the camera angle so you can get a closer view of how I do the corners. So you can see for the corner here, I'm gonna take my fabric and pull it. I'm gonna look underneath and see if I like the way it looks so far, and I do. So I'm gonna come in almost near the end of the corner here and put in a staple. Take my opposite end, smooth that out. Keep working with the fabric and keep smoothing it. Kinda of hard to see on camera, but once I have it all smoothed out, I'll twist this fabric just a little bit just to kind of tuck it in. I have all of that there. I am happy with how that looks now. So I'm gonna put a staple in it in several places just to hold that in. Now, I don't know if you can see that, I like the way that corner looks now. So I'm going to go through and do all the rest of these corners. So now what I'm gonna do is go back in, cut off the excess from the corners here, and then just go back and put extra staples all the way around just to make sure everything is super secure and will not be going anywhere. I'm so happy with how these projects turned out. I love shopping my home to give a new look to old, well-loved pieces. The bench looks like spring in full bloom. And my husband thinks the shabby stool would make a beautiful place for a bride to rest her foot while the groom removes the garter. Thank you so much for being here. Please like this video and also subscribe for more kinda shabby, but always chic, crafty inspirations. Until next week, my friend, be blessed.